Across the globe, we have witnessed efforts to bring forward truth and to build pathways forward to reconciliation between groups. At its heart, reconciliation must be about forming respect. I believe that indigenous languages and cultures are also a key aspect. Through art, storytelling, dance and song and drumming, Rediscovery and reaffirmation take hold. I started working with Indigenous video game developers to try to challenge people's assumptions about traditional knowledge. The intention of the residential schools and the intention of legislation like the Indian Act was to rip away our culture and our language. It was a willful interruption of just the natural growth of any culture. Um, and I think it sets up these unrealistic expectations of authenticity because of that, because people think of Indigenous culture as something that if it's not the way it was 200 years ago, well then it's not traditional anymore, it's not authentic anymore. My research is really about how our values carry through and how we use whatever tools are available to us, how we address our context using our teachings. A really great thing about the video games is that one, it creates an immersive environment, so you're actually brought into a space. You can create an empathic connection with the story that's being told. You can create a character, you can identify with that character. And a lot of the video games I work with are really about um, trying to get people to identify with the experience of colonization or with the experience of what it's like to be an indigenous person. I was actually thinking of, uh, of Sinclair's words, uh, Murray Sinclair, the chair of the Truth and Reconciliation. Uh, seven generations of children uh, went through the residential schools. When I think about that, that's that's going way back. He says we need uh, to change. Uh, it was the educational system that has contributed to this problem in this country. And in the same breath, he says, uh, it is the educational system we believe that's going to help us. So that's where I am right now. <clears throat> I'm right in the middle of that. In 1978, we took control of our own education. In our region, nine Creek communities, so we have this uh, opportunity uh, to turn things around uh, as a Cree nation. The work that I've done uh, is working on a traditional education program in Grand Rapids. What we wanted to do was help youth re-engage in education, um, but also to stay true to uh, Cree values and the Cree way of thinking. Everyone is equal, no one is above one another, we're all connected. We need to respect the land, we need to respect the animals. Um, it's things like this that we wanted to pass on. I think those are really important teachings for youth. At the end of the six weeks, everyone who was involved in the program saw that these youth had, um, had changed, you know, just a little bit and some uh, others had a, a really big change. Um, they were holding their heads higher. How do we strike the balance between community policy making and self-governance of Indigenous communities and external support? How do the rest of Canada and non-Indigenous people support you and the building of your community and the revitalization of your culture and language in the way you want it to happen? I think what's becoming very important in our, in our context is, uh, is really uh, coming to the place of understanding, uh, like I said, that we take a lead on how we're going to govern ourselves. When it comes to the development of policy, um, consultation alone is never enough. We need Indigenous policy makers that are in charge of actually making policy. It's important for uh, our youth, our children, to learn who they are uh, and we have to do that work to recover what was lost and that takes time and for us to get it all together and relearn for ourselves so then we can pass that on to the kids. Be patient, be supportive um, and, and we'll get it done.
<laughs> there are, are indeed signs of hope and optimism. The hope is emerging through the voices, talents, and expressions of young indigenous leaders who are placing culture and identity at the very center of their work and lives. And their efforts are not about strengthening themselves only, but rather the positive impact ripples through their families, peer groups, and communities. This, above all, is a story about resilience.